Thanks for joining me tonight. This is a video that's been a long time in the making. Uh, I'm gonna go over my homemade kitchen and how I did it and looking back and reflecting on it, just some of the advice and things to look out for that I'd wanna pass along to any of you who are thinking about making your own kitchen. Now, the one unique thing in this video, which I guess the regular 4K video and then the 360 video can both see, is that I'm shooting this in two different forms. I'm shooting a regular video and then a 360 video. And I'm gonna be posting both of these on the internet. I recently got um, this 360 camera and I'm still kind of trying to figure out when the best time is to use it. Um, I've used it a few times for family events and it's been pretty cool. But I thought this could be a fitting video to use this 360 camera so you can go through and pan around and look at the whole kitchen in more detail. So the links to both of these videos will be down in the description below. So please take a look at it. And then also what I'm gonna hit is why I did it. My favorite parts, the main tools I use so you know is how much equipment do you really need. I did this with pretty common tools. And then how I did it, and then the things that I'd recommend looking, looking out for and thinking through. Um, the hard thing with making your own kitchen is literally you can do anything. Um, this all started out as just sheet goods and one by two or one by three maple um, and machined it all out. So you can pick every single component, the dimensions. And so that's a good thing, but it also be a bit overwhelming. And then why I think it's worth it. So why did I do this? We bought our house in COVID and right at the start of COVID, I kind of got into woodworking. I'd done about a project or two before that. And so I started redoing this house. It needed a complete overhaul. We've remodeled, refloored the whole house. Every room in this house had a different type of flooring. So we had to tear all that out. We installed um, oak flooring throughout the entire house. And so as I was getting through, going through that, it was just very rewarding doing each thing, doing each task and learning from it. And during COVID, none of us had really anything going on working from home. Um, so I had a lot of free time after work. So I decided to take on making this kitchen from scratch. We knew we needed to remodel it. And um, it allowed us then to make it exactly how we wanted it. And also we got to save um, some money. I was going to post an itemized um, cost of this kitchen, but this was right at the start of COVID, the price of plywood. So it's kind of irrelevant um, to the prices now. But with the plywood and wood, I think it cost roughly 5K. And then I looked up and these quartz countertops were 4K that we paid for them. Um, it took about four months to build all these cabinets, I was working down in my basement. The real hard thing is the space it takes up to store these. Um, so I just built them on nights and then a little bit on the weekends, um, sprayed the um, face frames, which I'll talk about later, down in the basement because it was winter and then installed them. Between the demo um, and having a somewhat functional kitchen was about one week. To go over what were my favorite parts of building this kitchen. Um, my favorite thing I think is building this range hood. Um, this was a really fun problem to tackle. I like math and the cool thing with this is there it's actually two cylinders um, meeting and that it think of like when you're doing crown molding and you have a double compound angle miter. Um, that's this, but then on a curve. Um, so it's a complicated shape to get, right? And if you go and look at pictures um, of like on Etsy and stuff, some of them don't look proportionate or right, or at the top, it just goes straight up. Uh, so I didn't want that. I wanted it to look proportionate. So I spent a lot of time making sure I got all my angles right and the curves right, the proportions. Um, and so I think it turned out really good. I ended up doing all the math and cutting it on our CNC, which I'll talk about later. The CNC really was a um, differentiator with this project um, of building this whole kitchen. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And I actually do sell the uh, plans for this on, online on Etsy. I'll include a link in the description below. But we sell the DXF, so if you have a CNC, like in open builds, which I have, you could cut on that. And then we also have one that you can just print out on a normal printer, uh, tape it together, trace it and cut it. Um, and I've sold that to a lot of different people and they found it really helpful. But this is definitely the highlight of our, um, the highlight of our kitchen. The next thing is the table legs for the island and for our 
coffee counter desk. Um, I'll go through and explain how I did that later on. And then the custom feet, and then the higher and deeper uppers. So initially, I was thinking of just doing everything standard, but the nice thing is, is when you're building your own kitchen, you can make everything exactly how you want. And so I went and with these higher and deep uppers, I wanted to be able to fit larger plates in them. And so the depth is 15 inches. I think normal is like 12 inches. Um, so that allows us to have um, fit more stuff in there. But since it's further out, they then are higher. So I put them 21, I think it's uh, 21 inches off the counter. Um, and that's nice so that when you're working with a mixer or something's underneath, you do have a little bit more room to work. Um, but it feels proportionate because of how it comes out um, from the wall. So if they were just like the normal 12 inches, that would look probably strange. Um, but these, this is again, all of the little details you get to think about when you're building your own custom kitchen from scratch. And then not that this was any craftsmanship on my part, but our Kohler um, cast iron sink is great. The next thing that I enjoy about our kitchen is having a microwave drawer and having this hidden in the island when we, um, the kitchen that was originally in here, the microwave was above the range where our range hood now is. And I would much rather have a range hood than have a microwave um, staring at me when I enter the kitchen. And so what drew us to this Bosch uh, drawer microwave is that you can um, set it in this hole flush. So a lot of ones when you look, they stick out, um, which I think really ruins the inset beaded look. Um, so this was definitely drawn, was a draw, is that it's just totally flush and then you just press the button and it pops out. So if you're gonna be doing this in a kitchen, I would highly recommend um, getting this Bosch microwave. I'll put a link below. Another part that I really liked about our kitchen is making these legs. So we have a total of three of these legs. My wife, she saw these on Pinterest and when I saw it, I thought there has to be a way that I can make it. And I was able to figure out by looking at a um, Matthias Wendell video, I was able to figure out how they probably made these and was able to replicate them exactly. And so you can see there, it's a shape and this is actually a uh, table saw blade. So it went, or the shape of the table saw blade. So when the table saw, it's spinning and you just push this through at an angle like this and you just run it through and it cuts this. And you wanna start off very low. So this took a very long time to do, but I ran it on, it was just a very big, uh, I used poplar so it'd be a little bit easier. I figured doing maple, which everything else in the kitchen is maple, running that through a saw sideways would be maybe a little more stressful on the saw. But just start it out and we just do probably like a 16th of an inch or maybe a little more per pass through at an angle. Um, definitely do this at your own risk. I made sure I had a lot of good guides, watched a lot of videos, read a lot of stuff on how to do it safely. Matthias has a great though, tutorial on how to do it, but ran it through until um, it's a three quarter um, inch thick piece of wood until it was almost, the arch was almost all the way cut through. And then to hide any imperfections and also to hide this step because it's not flush, um, the person they had this little half inch um, detail. The last fun detail was making this uh, built-in bench. Uh, this house, it was just a little bit too big of an open space and we couldn't think it was too, too small to put a table, um, but too big not to do anything. And so we put this bench seat, we use it every day. It is a very great feature when you have people over, they can sit here. Some people can sit at um, the island, other people can stand. Um, it's a really great um, addition. I would highly recommend it, adding one. And then with the CNC, did something fun here. Um, we had a vent and need to think how could I implement this and add this in a creative way, a vent. Didn't really want one, um, a big ugly metal vent here. So I just notched and did a bunch of quarter inch um, slots and I think it turned out great. Um, and then throughout this whole kitchen to match the furniture feet, did uh, um, baseboards that are just with a uh, Diablo detailed bit. And that goes throughout this whole kitchen. Um, it has its own baseboard. And if you're finding this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It sure would help the channel.
So to go through then the primary tools I used, and I'll have all the links in the description, I used just a standard DeWalt 12-inch uh, double compound miter saw. Um, I used a DeWalt 10-inch job site table saw, a corded Bosch half-inch collet router and router table. The key thing is the corded. Um, you're doing a ton of routing on one of these uh, projects. I do have a palm router that's an 18 volt rigid and there's no way that could have kept up. Um, it would just be going through batteries so often, especially going through the maple, which is all built out of maple. So definitely you want a very strong half inch uh, corded router. And then I just used a rigid 18 volt drill. Um, I did buy a five combo kit Five tool combo kit, it's been very useful for all the different parts of the house. Um, the Sawzall is also really useful when you're demoing doors and pulling those out, which had to put all new doors in this house. That's one great tool to have. Um, another tool, which if you don't have one, you need to get one. This is, I think, the one of the most overlooked tools, but so useful to have once you get it, is a laser level. So I have a Bosch laser level. Um, it's a game changer. I used it for leveling the the cabinets, the uppers, especially doing all of the backsplash, lining it up, and it's just useful for hanging pictures. You're gonna use it all the time. I think I got it during a Black Friday sale, um, and I think Home Depot does that pretty often, so definitely check that out. And then I needed a bunch of jigs doing this kitchen, so I ended up using Craig. They have um, a really great set of tools now, or jigs. Now, they do sometimes feel expensive, but the time and precision and repeatability that it gives you, I think it's totally worth it, especially when you're thinking about putting in a whole kitchen, how much it would cost if you hired that out. So the jigs that I have um, are the pocket hole, standard pocket hole jig, uh, inset beaded face frame jig. Now they have a whole huge system that you could buy that's really expensive. I think it would be nice if you wanna spend all that money, but they also just sell the router bits and that is really useful um, and I bought that and then I made my own jig to use on my router table. So I made, um, use that to make all the face frames. Um, I also use, Craig has some plates for measuring the height of your router bits and that's very useful because precision is what the name of the game is and just using a um, ruler or a tape measure to see are you a quarter inch high, is, it's kind of hard to do it. But these, being able to just lift the router up until you see the gap, that is really good with just having it be very accurate and repeatable. And then I also got their Craig crown molding uh, jig. And I did crown molding through our whole house. That's an extremely useful um, tool to have. Uh, and then their cabinet combo kit, which came with a cabinet jig drill um, holder for the recessed part, this one right here. Uh, that'll drill that hole, very useful to have. Um, then also one that'll do the drawer handles and a drawer slide. Now the drawer slide one, I never ended up actually using it. Um, so that one's not as essential. The shelf pin hole jig, that's also very useful. Um, and then I 3D printed some jigs myself um, and that was really helpful. I think having a 3D printer and using it for custom jigs on where drill holes need to be placed can definitely make life easier. So I use those for where to put the door hinges on the actual carcass and drilling those holes. And then also on the back of every like Blum undermount uh, drawer box, you have to cut a little notch and drill a quarter inch hole. And I built a jig. I have a video on how I did it, but made that super easy. And then the huge hero of this whole project was my open builds lead 1515 CNC. Um, it's an open source CNC, cuts a four by four sheet of plywood. It's a little oversized where it can do over a four by four. Um, but this was a game changer and it really helped make everything very repeatable. And when you're doing this many different cabinets, it's easy to like zone out and miss a step and be off on something. And so having it all coded where it was just a repeatable process um, definitely saved me a ton. Um, and I'll, I have some videos on my channel about how I used it. Um, and then for finishing everything, I used a Graco X5 uh, airless sprayer. And 
Um, that definitely you need an airless sprayer. I don't think I could, I can't even imagine um, painting this all by hand and getting the finish that I got. Um, and I used uh, Benjamin more advanced. I used a very fine tip uh, when spraying that. Um, and then I did, the cabinets are all in White Dove and the island, which you'll see later, is in Newbor Newburyport Blue. Things to think through while you're planning your kitchen. Make it how exactly you want it. So you wanna think through all the different things that you find either annoying in kitchens or that you really like. And like one thing when I was building this kitchen that I wanted is everything to have no seams between cabinets. So. Um, the face frames that you see here, um, I guess this, there's just one, so you're not really going to have a joint there, but in this one, there's no joint here. It's all solid. And that's the way the whole, um, kitchen is. There's no joints between any, um, face frames. Uh, I used appliances to split things up. Then you have to think through ergonomics. We love our large Island. It's about a seven foot by four foot Island. And then at the one end, we have a breakfast nook. It's very good, but that did comment maybe making the walk around area a little smaller. I still made sure it was the recommended amount, which I think it's like three feet is the recommended amount or more. And then here it's bigger where we have the oven. It's um, like 40, 41 inches. Um, but you wanna think through all that. I would have maybe made it a little bit of a um, wider so people can pass, um, but we love our large island. We love the breakfast area. So when you're going through and designing your kitchen, read up on the recommended amounts of like, what's the proper layout of a kitchen. Um, you definitely want that, especially like around the refrigerator, all those different measurements. Um, you can then like how we have our uppers are higher and deeper, having that customization. Um, our lowers, they're the standard amount. So one of the key things you need to decide on is how are your lower cabinets going to be laid out? Um, mine I decided was either going to be a, um, like this style where you have a drawer and then a door, or you have three drawers. And the way that the height of this uh, door was decided was our kitchen garbage can, um, which is over there uh, behind the camera for you 360 people. Um, and so that, the size of that garbage can determined how high this was. So once I decided what that height was, then I decided from a look standpoint that I would have uh, two lower drawers and split the difference there. Um, wouldn't be able to really fit three in that space. And then I decided based on the height of my upper, I wouldn't be able to do this kind of panel where it's the uh, style and rail because the little inner panel that's a quarter inch plywood that would have been so small. So this is just a plain board um, with rounded over edges. Um, so that simplifies things, not having to make as many of those. And then this lower one is the style and rail drawer. Um, so then when we get down here, uh, once we've installed the cabinets, I had to kind of pretty up the, um, the feet the, and add like furniture feet to it. But the one problem when making this kitchen is that every single um, uh, cabinet, when you level it, it's gonna be at a slightly different height. And so that would either make it where this part, and it's maybe like a quarter inch, maybe a half inch difference from the um, uh, worst cabinet to the high, best cabinet or highest to lowest, um, maybe not a whole half inch, but there is definitely variation. And so, if I had played with this half inch drop here, that would have been noticeable. So what I did is having a CNC, I was able to write a macro where I entered in how high it needed to be from this piece that goes across the top, how high it needed to, to be. And it then subtracted a half inch for this drop. And then the radius of this curve matches the height. Um, so each one will be slightly different. There's I think hardly any that are identical. Um, and so that makes it where they all appear to be the exact same height, but they're all different. Um, so that was definitely a very fun part of the whole project. So now into how I did it. I broke down the sheets of plywood into four by four sheets. And then each of the carcasses was cut out on my CNC. 
And I had a JavaScript app that had all the specifications of once I decided what each of my like standard cabinets was of how big the upper drawer was, how big the lower section was, and then if it was a drawer that had um, cabinet doors or did it have drawers, it went through and would cut out all the different notches needed and dados. I have a, a video showing how I did this on my CNC um, on my channel. And then for the phrase frames, I used the Craig inset beaded jig, um, cut the styles and rails on my miter saw, and then I used a router to cut the notches. Um, then I pocket hold, glued in, in the face frames all together, and I spray painted them um, in the basement because it was the winter time. Now, uh, the one part of like with the face frame, the unique part on here was they're all assembled as one um, for each unit. So it would have been hard to put that on the drawer, on the boxes and bring the whole thing up. It would have been really bulky. So I did that and installed them and assembled them up here in the kitchen right before putting them in, um, which simplified it a little bit. Each drawer box though behind it is its own um, box. And then I just screwed the boxes together, then pocket hold each of these face frames on. And one thing here, these are all rounded over. Um, the round over on each of these for the uppers is rounded and then at the very top for where the crown molding goes in It's a point. So just again thinking through all that detail so you can get a miter and then on the bottom uh, It's the reverse. So it's rounded all the way to the top, but the bottom isn't rounded. So the decorative feet um, can be installed And then all the, the drawers are made with and doors I made with a Diablo router bit set and a Stalin rail bit set and used one and three inch, uh, one by three inch maple. And then the one tip that I got, that I got from my brother-in-law would definitely recommend is while waiting for the cabinet, the countertops to come, you could just use plywood or not plywood, melamine sheets uh, as a temporary countertop service. So that was great that as soon as the cabinets were in, we were able to just start using the kitchen with melamine. Now the backsplash, it was my first time doing tile. Um, Use the laser level a ton and would highly recommend that. Um, one thing I, I did choose when doing this tile was to get more of a, like a wavy texture and figured that would um, help hide any imperfections. And I think it turned out um, pretty good. Now why I think it's worth it for you to do your own kitchen. Um, you use your kitchen every single day so you can decide how you, um, how exactly you want it. And then plus every time you're using it, you're kind of reflecting thinking like of the journey and um, able to appreciate how hard all that work was. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And are you thinking about doing your own kitchen? If so, tell me why I would love to uh, hear other people's reasons. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. That would really uh, help me out. Thanks a lot.